So it seems Square Enix being bought by Sony is trending once again on the internet with a new piece of information that kind of alludes to this in a way. Um, we're going to dive into that and see what that could be all about. We also got an update from uh, Jason Trier in terms of uh, video game cycles. And lastly, we'll be looking at a new patent that Sony has put out. Now, before we jump into that, if you do me a huge favor, like, subscribe, share the video, helps the channel a ton. Really do appreciate it. Every bit goes a long way. Now let's jump into this Square Enix X PlayStation uh, situation here. And this comes from Push Square. This is all according to a newsletter from the president, uh, Yasuke Matsuda. And we're going to go over a couple things that were said here. Firstly, in the medium to long term, Square Enix will accelerate our efforts to strengthen our internal development capabilities by further expanding our internal talent pool, while also more quickly concentrating our resources on the development of titles that are competitive globally. In other words, it wants to commit to its own projects while expanding its portfolio. So as you can see with them doing more Final Fantasy stuff, uh, Dragon Quest, you know, the IP that really do well for them, they are focusing on those. Now when you consider how many new games Square Enix released in 2022, it all makes sense. The company also wants to refocus its publishing efforts as Matsuda notes that the importance of end-to-end -end global publishing as previously the company's Japanese and Western publishing arms operated independently in a way. So Matsuda goes on to clarify that the goal is to become one Square Enix. So this could mean quite a few different things. Um, some people are taking this to mean that consolidation is coming. Uh, in a lot of ways, when you hear the word one Square Enix, yeah, a consolidation could be coming. Um, and it all is a matter of the way you look at it. So it's perspective, right? Some people see Square Enix positioning themselves into uh, somewhat of a more acquirable position in a way that uh, other companies could come in and buy them effortlessly or have uh, less, less barriers, I'll say, uh, to acquire them, whether it be funding, whether it be complications with too many studios in different regions, which they have kind of resolved at this point. But one thing to really kind of think about when you see somebody say Square Enix and Sony or Sony acquiring Square Enix is that they do have that relationship, that very long term relationship and many third party exclusives from them as well. Like you just look at Forspoken, Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy 14 continues to be an exclusive. Final Fantasy 7 Remake continues to be an exclusive. Rebirth looks like it's going to be an exclusive as well. So these are all things to consider. Is there something deeper layered going on there, especially with all the rumors that have been happening around this? I do think that Sony is definitely a candidate, a big candidate, if we're talking about companies that would acquire Square Enix. Um, the thing is, though, that I can't say for sure that that's the case. I don't think anybody really can. Uh, unless you are really in those uh, internal studios with those discussions happening, which I think all the people online claiming these things are absolutely not involved in these talks. So that's why I don't take much from them when I when I hear rumors like that. But I do think that it's it's a logical move for Sony to buy Square Enix. So that's kind of all I have to say about that. I think that we'll definitely uh, follow the story as it continues to develop. So far, there's really nothing but speculation here based on some words the Square Enix has used that could be, you know, interpreted in different ways. So it depends on how you look at it. But I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you think that this is a sign that Sony will acquire Square Enix? Now, next, I want to talk to you guys about something Jason Schreier said. He says, fun fact on Twitter. Video game production cycles have gotten so long that if a big budget game studio started working on a brand new project today, it would likely be for the PlayStation 6. And this is to say that development times have just grown so much, especially when we're talking about AAA games. Makes you wonder what would happen with the like, Deviation Games, what would happen with uh, Haven Studio, places like this where they are making big budget AAA games and they are doing very ambitious things. Is this a situation where we're probably not going to see these games um, for a couple more years then? Or is that a situation where uh, they were so early in development that yeah, these games could come out in the next two years. Who knows? We don't know yet. We don't even know what the, the games look like for that matter. But it's an interesting thought and it definitely gives some new information to consider, uh, especially, you know, thinking about the new studios that are formed and what they are working on and how we will probably not see them for quite some time. Now, lastly, I want to talk to you guys about a new patent that has gone out. A new Sony patent discovered by Very Alley Gaming shows the company looking deeper into cloud gaming 
as this new patent describes a pass-through device players could use in conjunction with a preferred streaming stick to play games through PS Plus. So it looks like it could be a USB stick or a streaming device, as they're calling it on this patent, plugged into an HDMI port, plugged into a device, which then plugs into the TV, which then shows PlayStation Now. At least that's what this patent shows is PlayStation Now. So I don't know if this will ever come to fruition. Uh, you know, patents these days, especially these days, there, there are so many patents and a lot of them we haven't seen yet, but it's interesting. And I feel like it's definitely something that could have some people interested to buy it. Uh, personally speaking, I, I would never do this just because I own a PlayStation already. So if I wanted to use that PlayStation Plus service of streaming games, I can just do that through my PlayStation as well. But this is definitely not geared towards those people. It's quite interesting. I think that uh, this may see the light of day. I know Xbox is working on one as well. So uh, it's not surprising that PlayStation would be working on, on one as well. At the same time, given that if cloud gaming reaches that height of you know, consumers looking into it, that your PlayStation would surely want to put their hand in the pot as well. But that is all I have for you guys in today's video. It's crazy, man, to think that uh, we've already just started this year and that we're getting quite a bit of information. Yesterday was a big video. Today, Square Enix and Sony, who knew? Who knew we'd be hearing about that so soon after the last time we talked about it? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think about the Square Enix X PlayStation thing. Let me know your thoughts about what Jason Schreier had to say about development cycles. And lastly, are you interested in this patent? Do you think this is something that could come to fruition? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you have not subscribed already, please like, subscribe, share the video. It helps the channel a ton. You can follow me on Twitter. Link will be in the description. And if you want to support the channel a step further, you can become a member for $1.99 Canadian a month. Every dollar gets reinvested into the channel. Thank you all for watching. I will talk to you all on the next one. Take care.